We are It's Just a Hill, a cycling club that promotes inclusion, judgment-free, with no gatekeepers. Focused on creating content from behind the handlebars to in the studio, It's Just a Hill is producing videos and podcasts to spread the message that cycling is for everyone. We are focused on reminding everyone that riding your bike can help you overcome any obstacle. Because after all, it's just a hill. Hello and welcome to another episode of the It's Just a Hill Cycling Podcast. I am John Stenning and I am joined by fellow IJA members and former guests of this very podcast, Cal Goodhouse, Brian St. Pierre, Sam Dimmick. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. Awesome to be here. Wow, I like Thank how you for having me. you're all so polite. You refuse <laughs> yeah. to talk over each other. Uh, I guess normally I have people maybe introduce themselves, but instead I introduced you. How did you? How would you rate my introduction? Starting with you, Cal. How would you rate it? Uh, maybe not your best work okay. so far, but yep. not bad. So far, either. not okay. the worst well, either. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Brian. I thought it was nice. It was short and sweet. It was solid. Yep. It was confident. Yeah, I selfishly liked the pronunciation of my name. So you think I did it correctly? <laughs> yeah, Sam Dimmick. Yeah, one M. Um, yeah, but sounds like two. Yeah, worked. It was great. Nice. Yeah, great. Um, Nine how, out of ten. How yeah. would people say it? Uh, Dimick. I don't know. Yeah, Dimick. Yeah, really? yeah. I think some people say that it's no good. It's, you say uh, it that way, you're canceled. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you're canceled. Yeah. Um, okay. How are everyone? Good. Everyone good. Yeah, doing great. Um, uh, did anyone ride their bikes today? Yeah, I rode to work and back. Nice. Just, Civil warrior. Just short and sweet. Yeah, home in the dark, actually. No, oh, yeah. Now the clocks have changed. Yeah. So. Yeah. Brian, did you ride your bike today? I did not ride today. I rode yesterday. Nice. How was that? It was good. It was good. Did 25 <laughs> miles. Nice. Went hard. Yep. It was good. Did uh, like 47 the day before that, maybe. There you go. Still getting back to it. Yep. Nice. Sam? Yeah, I rode before work this morning nice. indoors on Zwift. Boo. Boo. Um, like 23 miles or something? Hell yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. It was good stuff. Who knows how those transfer over, but yeah. Descending on yeah, Switchback. Yeah, those miles aren't the, those miles aren't <laughs> I, was the same. I was descending on Switchbacks <laughs> at 60 miles an hour, so yeah. it was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's real. That's yeah. reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The miles feel harder. <laughs> yeah. On Zwift? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because you're averaging 24 miles per hour on yeah. every ride at like <laughs> yeah, 170 it's, watts. Yeah. yeah, it's like you're, you're barely putting in any watts and going like 38 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, but yet the the miles don't move; they don't take away. <laughs> I don't get it. It makes no sense. <laughs> um, Brian, you sort of alluded to taking some time off the bike. Do you want to talk about it at all? Sure. Do you have you talked to anyone about this? Like your therapist, are, maybe. Oh, not in that regard. Because no. this can be like your therapy session. Uh, I mean, we don't also, I'm not a, none of us are professionals in that regard. So, but you've taken some time off the bike. Yes, I had COVID. Oh, yeah, right. Like ev- you, like everyone, except yes. for me. I have not had it. was going to say, well, actually, I know Sam just had it. Yep. And this had, is our first time seeing each other. We yep. had it in the same like week or two span. Uh-huh. Yep. Great Cal, to see you. Cal, you have not had it. Not right? had COVID. Nice. No. Well, this is the non COVID side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got vaccinated again today. Oh, yeah. wow. Fourth? Yeah. Yeah. Fourth plus a flu shot. Right. Yep. End mm-hmm. of 2022 for me, too. Fourth plus <laughs> a flu shot. That's what I we're had, living. I had four shots myself. Yeah. So don't think you're safe. <laughs> no one's safe. No one's safe. We're all going to get it eventually. Um. So you had COVID. I had COVID. Off the bike. Ended up, in the end, it was almost perfectly three weeks off the bike. And it wasn't just like I was letting myself take the time and ease back in. It was that I was having a physical issue uh, starting when I tried to ride for the first time, which was a week after getting sick. Yeah. And I, you know, decided to spin on Zwift in the basement, no effort. And 15 minutes in, my glutes... All right, my glute on my left side and hamstring, like top of my hamstring, completely both on the same locked side? up on the same side. Damn, uh, and just thought it was crazy. Like, I I had taken, you know, two and three weeks off at different points in time for whatever reason, sickness or injury. Yeah, I mean, and that's getting very back common, to it, right? I never never had experiences like that. Never had trouble like that. So I gave it a couple days after that. You know, stretched and rolled, did all the things to try to like calm that area down. Try it again. 
and locked up even quicker. But uh-huh. this time, like a, my left glute and <laughs> one of my left quads. Yeah. And I, I ended up having to spin back, like just on the bike path near my house. I, I wasn't even a mile away from my house and I locked up that quick and it came on so quick and just hurt so bad. Now you're talking like to, a sharp, like, like a pain, like a cramp that you get like long ride when you haven't hydrated enough type of cramp. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that's what it was really like. Or like when you're laying in bed at like 10 o'clock and you rode like 70 miles earlier and you know, you didn't eat right. And then you try to move your leg in a funny way and you're like, ah, and your wife's like, what the fuck are you yelling about? I'm like, I got another cramp. <laughs> Does that happen to ever, anyone else? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That happens to me like <laughs> once a month. Yeah. Uh, I don't get cramps in bed like that, but I do okay. twitch pretty bad sometimes, oh. which you talked about on an episode with Cal, other Cal. Yes. Yeah. Um, Cal Roberti. Cal Roberti. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we could, having, we're, I'm not going to say back to that. We don't have to get into that, the twitch. The, that's for yeah, another yeah, yeah. episode. That's for the twitch episode. I would like episode. to talk about that, actually. We can talk about In the, the future. But today? No, no. Should maybe I add it today. to the thing? Oh, if we need more time, but okay. Uh, <laughs> if padded for time, talk Twitch. But yeah, cramps. Yeah, I had to. I had to. I had to spin back like from the bike path around. You know, just around the corner back to my house with one leg because oof, it was cramped up. My quad was cramped up so bad it hurt so bad. I was almost yelling. Yeah, and I'm and I'm <laughs> riding back with that happening, and I'm passing neighbors walking their dogs that I know and regularly talk to. So like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, you're uh, like a very friendly. And I'm like about to yell in pain. It <laughs> oh sucks. my god! So anyway, long story short, I asked my doctor about it. Took a nice couple to, days to hear back. To yeah. Um, I mean, I was reluctant. I don't know. Uh, I tend to be reluctant about asking doctors for stuff until, you know, I like to self-diagnose and yeah, dude, try to use the my brain. For. And, yeah, I've been to the internet. doctor since I was 18 years old. I'm fine. You're good. <laughs> fine. Clearly, you're good. <laughs> Either I'm just going to drop dead someday. Big deal. What do I care? <laughs> um, Too dark for the cycling <laughs> podcast. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, Jocelyn yeah. wouldn't like that. No, but... <laughs> It's not my problem anymore. <laughs> what about Harry? <laughs> yeah, I'm voting in. I'll, I'll, I'll outlive Harry at least. Um, so you did, you talked to your doctor. I and talked what did to they the say? doctor. Because I mean, they, people have like dealt with COVID. A lot of different people deal with COVID in a very different way. Like it's not yeah. uncommon for, if you want to just talk professional cyclists to get COVID and like have something bad yeah. happen to them. Like Sonny Cobrelli. Right. Yeah. Sonny Cobrelli had to retire. He had to retire. Uh, yeah. Because just he saw that. Because of yeah. pericarditis um, yeah. as a result. And there have been some folks that are, I've seen, especially athletes, if you go back to uh, exercise too quickly after COVID, it can be bad for your heart and yeah. things like that. Right. So, yeah. So, so what, did, did, what your, did your doctor say? Yeah. And I, I had read that about the, like, some heart related issues you know and mm-hmm. really needing to take your time so that helped me mentally deal with taking the time yeah. and just relaxing focusing on different things luckily i actually had a very busy music schedule for those couple weeks um at like two gigs each weekend i think and some other practices so it was just like it, it was okay yeah um Doctor just said that, you know, muscle soreness and issues like that are common. Yeah. Give it some time. If it doesn't clear up, come in. And uh is you know, that, it did go away. So is I'm it back. cardiovascular? No, no, no. Does that have to do with the blood being pumped in your body? I don't know. I, I have really, no idea. You know. Yeah, I don't know what would cause that. Yeah, I I started to look into it a little bit, you know, tried to research it and Things just got over my head really quick because sure. there's, there's a lot of science and and stuff. It got real deep real quick. Yeah. So I ended up forgetting about it. But now you're back. In a way. <laughs> you're back. You rode I'm yesterday. I'm back now. I've been riding. You rode the day before. Yeah. You've I mean, got I've, some recovery weeks in you. Yeah. I've been feeling feeling yeah. pretty good, actually. Hell like, yeah. Not my legs don't feel great. I don't feel super strong or anything, but I do feel rested, I'd say. Yeah. I, good, I'm good not 100% body. yet. I'm still coming back. It's only... I've only been riding again for about a week. Yeah. Got about a hundred, maybe 125, 130 last week. So getting back. Yeah. Feeling good. Nice. So nice. happy to be back. Happy to be back. Back on yeah. the bike. Sam, anything big in your life? 
Oh, geez. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, um, I kind of, I guess I dealt with COVID a teeny bit differently. I, I got it. I kind of got hit hard with it on a Friday and then um, kind of laid around and rested for up until the following Wednesday. Um, and then I started to move around a little bit and even got back on the bike, I think, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Just to get outside. And like, I felt like my biggest symptom was like dust in the lungs. Mm-hmm. Um, that's which, what the doctor called, called it. <laughs> that, that was self. Hey doc, can you listen to this real quick? <gasps> yeah. Ah, uh, you got all dust in the lungs. That got was, some dust yeah. rattling around in there. That was self-diagnosed the dunks, dust in the lungs, but see, it's what I do. Don't yeah. go to the doctor. self diagnosed Um, and yeah, so I just, I don't know. I wanted to breathe outside air and I yep. just went for some easy spins on the bike, went to the, just like this random park and in, in Northern Rhode Island and walked around, but, um, Work's been, other than that, work's been crazy lately. Yeah. Working a lot. Um, trying to bike as much as I can, squeeze it in on the weekends, get long rides in. And yeah, I don't know. Thinking about my goals for following season. What Save I'm that for the goals. They're going to have a goals podcast. All right. All right. All right. But that's, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So. I mean, you don't have to think of them now. It's only November. Yeah. So. Wow. Really thinking ahead though. Excited for the holidays. Um, trying to get as many like long rides in and outdoors as I can before it gets too cold because. Yeah. It does. It gets cold. It gets cold. Life, yeah, life. Yeah. Cal, no COVID. No COVID. But you did quit a job. Yeah, I quit my second job. Yeah. Uh, more time to ride. Yeah, I've been working six days a week since last February. Yeah. I uh, really didn't ride as much as I wanted to all year. Um, it's been tough seeing you guys go to some really cool events and do some cool big rides that I missed out on. Um, but yes, yeah. Social media is a real uh, know, fear Strava. of missing out. Uh, like machine really it really is yeah yeah so um yeah like we were just saying got more time to ride now yeah and already that freedom has me thinking about what i want to do now to train for next year yeah um just got a trainer or bought, oh, nice. bought my buddy smart trainer yeah um debating if i'm going to get a zwift subscription or maybe mm-hmm. trainer road instead yeah trainer has a more structured program Oh, okay. um, and just got a second mm. bike, got a new bike. Hell yeah. Uh, so now, coming in soon. Yeah. Uh, on its way. Um, Do you want to tell everyone what you yeah, got? Tell got us. A specialized crux. Hell yeah. Nice. Great bike. Um, and so definitely opened up some new possibilities for the kinds of rides I want to do next year yep. and, and goals as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, wow. that's awesome. I like that. I like that. Little, uh, I, no, I, it's I good. new new bikes well, and changes exciting. in yeah. life are really yeah. big. And yeah, just, for sure. John, do you want to talk, tell us about your new bike? Oh, I got a new bike. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah custom bike, baby. <laughs> custom, it's just a hill bike. It's a Gray's Wormhole uh, from, from Mythic Bike Works. They uh, sponsor the club. They built the bike up for me, got it custom painted, and I've taken it on one ride so far. Sam was there. Yep. Uh and uh yeah it's a gravel bike it's off-road and it's fun it's got uh, the widest tires i've ever ridden uh 42s that's big for me i'm you know i'm a road guy so uh i want skinny fucking tires and um yeah it's got this wild uh it's uh shram components but with garbaruk uh chain ring and cassette and it's a 44 in the front and a 1050 in the back so it's just like a wild mountain bike sort of setup with a mountain bike derailleur and drop bars and yeah i'm excited to ride it more especially this time of year, especially when it gets a little bit colder. Before we get into cold weather riding gear, I would like to talk about something that Cal brought up when we were like talking about brainstorming for this episode. And it's about like balancing time with our bikes that we love so much, all of our new bikes, right, mm-hmm. that we talk about and we buy new things for, and our significant others. We're all in different parts of our life i don't know how you say this right we're all different parts of our life okay (laughs) that's true that is true Uh, that's not a lie it's true um but the reason i say that is because like i'm 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 a married person and everyone here is like in a different situation right sam you're like you're dating sometimes right uh cal you're in a relationship yeah i've been in the same relationship for seven years for seven years Yeah. yeah and brian you're a married man i am yeah you got a ring on your finger no me either uh (laughs) It's okay. Um, but like finding time to ride bikes is something that we talked about with work and like mm-hmm. we're none of us are like professional riders or anything. So things are chaotic, busy lives. And one of the things I think is like balancing that time between like the person that you like spend your time with, the person that you live with, or or if you're like in the dating scene trying to 
maybe you're like trying to date people. Like, how do you balance that time? Cal, like what, what brought this to mind for you? Like, why did you want to talk about it specifically? Yeah. It's just something I've thought about from time to time. Cycling is a sport, like you said, that uh, demands a, a huge time commitment. Um, depending on if you have like a mileage goal for the year right. or if you're trying to race and reach a certain fitness level, um, all those things require a big time commitment, usually at minimum like 10 hours a week. Um, if not, you know, more like 20 for some of us. Sure. Um, and so it can be tough to balance that time commitment with a relationship. Um, I know a lot of cyclists who, uh, seem to only date other cyclists or have been oh, interesting. Uh, married to other cyclists for, uh, many years now. Yeah. Um, because I think if you have a partner who wants to go away to, uh, race, uh, 10 weekends out of the summer, right. um, if you're not also a racer, that's not going to be that fun for you. Um, also just make, maybe the person just understands more too. Yeah. Right. Like, cause I think like understanding is such a big part of like, cause it's, it's one thing for me to like convince myself that I want to spend 20 hours on my bike a week, mm-hmm. but like, how do I, talk to someone else that like doesn't want to do that and like be like no it's like it's good for me you know like how do you yeah. communicate that you know yeah absolutely um yeah i mean i live seven miles from the beach and i didn't go to the beach once this summer because <laughs> yeah. i used all my free time to get out and ride when i could yeah um and so yeah i think i would just be kind of curious to hear uh how you guys have managed that i can certainly talk about uh, my relationship as well in that regard. Yeah. Um, I, I think like, so I guess it sort of depends on how you're looking at it. Right. Three of us in committed relationships, Sam, you're someone that like, I mean, I don't, we don't, we need to say like who, like who exactly you're dating, but yeah. like you've dated people, yeah. but you also are focused on riding your bike. And like, this is something that we talked about off the podcast the other day, but there must be like a, certain time when maybe you are seeing someone that you want to like ramp up how much time you're seeing with them. If things are going well, does that mean that like time on the bike is being sacrificed? Like, is that something that you think about? Yeah, totally. I always think that, uh, there are three different things like work, personal life being like dating, I guess, and, and hanging out with friends too. Um, and then bikes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And then I am not always the best at doing all three of them well. So one usually has to give and a lot of the times it's just like personal life yeah. dating and it's easy to, for that one to give because I don't really have like a commitment there. Uh-huh. Um, so I guess like, I don't know, I, a main part of my time is bikes and work and that's And bikes really... can be social. Yeah. And like if you're not, oh, ta- like yeah. mm-hmm. if you're not dating a cyclist, but you're just talking about like, like us four going and going for a ride together, yeah. like that can become very social too. Yeah. So it almost like checks that box at the same time. Yeah. But yeah. So, I mean, I honestly just put all like my biggest priority is like working out and like, I don't know, that's just what I love doing and it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I was saying to Cal before the podcast that I just like love my schedule too and like love my life and life's great. Hell so yeah. like, yeah to for for like someone else to break up that life it would just take like a certain like a really important somebody or a special person to like break up my schedule or my life because it's not something that needs to be forced yeah or anything like that. exactly and i think i'm a person that like is alone a lot and uh jordan not like alone a lot but i'm fine with like being by myself or like whatever so yeah um it's awesome this past year i was training for iron man lake placid which was like kind of took up a ton of my time sure um so that was kind of just i was kind of just horse blinders to that so ever since then my life's kind of opened up a little bit but still still trying to become a better athlete and stronger and all that so i don't know it's tough tough juggling but i guess i have a little bit more freedom than than you guys and or others so yeah sure i don't know but i don't know yeah so no i think i think that's great i mean when we first sort of like started planning this episode it was going to be the three of us and i think it's nice to have like a different perspective in here right because we're in committed relationships and we can sort of speak to that and like how that works for us but yeah like it's i think it's important for everyone to have that balance right i mean there's even times where i feel like i spend too much time on the bike and it's taking away from other things whether it's just like menial tasks around the house or like other type of self care. You're like, I have, Mm. like I told you, I haven't been to the doctor in so long. (laughs) If I didn't ride my fucking bike so much, I could just go to the doctor or the dentist, but I'm not interested in that. And, um, Brian, how, how does it work 
for you, like, uh, I don't, I mean, that's sort of a very like broad question, but do you find it, um, you find balance in spending time with, with, I don't want, I don't want to dox your wife, Dan- <laughs> Danielle. You can bleep it out. <laughs> you, can, you can say it. <laughs> or, or maybe I'll bleep it out. You, you can bleep it out, too. That'd be fun. No, that's fine. Sound yeah. kind of funny. Um, but, like, are there, like, are there any specific specific challenges that you can think of? Or is it, like, smooth? Or is it, like, be, I guess, be as open and as honest as you're comfortable with being. And, I mean, like we said, you do edit the podcast. So you can just cut this whole part out, too. And we can just go right to <laughs> Cal or me talking about it. Um, well what's really in the back of my mind is like if Danielle decided to watch this podcast uh-huh. and then she would just see it right in on my eyes <laughs> right into the camera <laughs> just watching every reaction I make uh no but I mean it's like yeah you know. so this is a really I'm really glad that you brought up this topic Cal oh cool um because it is it is so central to my day-to-day life as I'm sure it is all of you guys um and and we kind of like have similar scenarios mm-hmm. as far as like amount of partners no children right one animal <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes yes so we're kind of similar in that regard yes and then one partner, and i was thinking zero <laughs> children one animal uh, each <laughs> that's great and uh Sam is married Sam, to Iron Sam Man. Is <laughs> not does not have a long term partner. Yeah, right now. Well, yeah, yeah. So no. Then pets. I was saying, well, maybe it equals out because Do any kids? he's still doing as much riding as we are. But then he was swimming all year and running all year yeah. too, mm-hmm. training for Iron Man. So right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, craziness. Married to the pool and the pavement. <laughs> We gotta uh, talk. We got I want to have a whole episode about how sometimes you swim like in like bodies of water that are outside. Wild. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. And then you got attacked by that bird one morning. He's got, he's got attacked by a bird. It's no, it's no joke. Either. It's out of control. That's... Egret. Yeah. Uh, sorry. The whole episode. What I thought about when you said that was like, <laughs> do, are egrets a diving bird? So I And saw... then like a beak like stabbing you in the back. Yep. Yes. I saw. <laughs> yep. And you're, you're trying to swim and there's just this thing stuck on your back just like flopping so around. So I saw a guy that got trapped out in the ocean in the middle of nowhere and seagulls were pecking at his eyes. Oh, <laughs> Oh my so god. So that's what the egret was trying to do to me that day. Yeah. Peck out my eyes. Luckily I saw it. Yeah. Good lord. All right. But anyway, sorry. No, don't be. Do you, no. Like, do you think that it thought you were dead or is it just instinctual? I have no idea. It was in my full wetsuit. You wet were suit. swimming, right? I'm swimming. Right, Move, so fully mean, moving. You would hope it would think that you were dead. I'd, l- I'd like to think at like a decent pace along. <laughs> yeah, right. It's probably guarding its He young. did an Iron Man. He can swim fast. <laughs> um All right, so Yeah. <laughs> bike and life balance yeah um so you asked how how does it go <laughs> how do i do it yeah how do you do it how do you uh, do well it? i would say it, it's not not well it's tough it's tough yeah it's really tough and i even when thinking about what to say in this episode what what my take on this topic would be like i realized oh but th- there's a bunch of different aspects to this like we could we could decide to go different ways with it like okay game plan how do you how do you structure your day right how do you structure your week to make sure you're allotting time for everything or just like maybe on i don't know on a deeper level like on a relationship level like give and takes between understanding that people need to have their own things and they do their, you know, they need their time to do their things versus like want and really a lot of drive to like an excitement to spend time with your partner Mm -hmm. and not letting one thing completely overtake the other. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's tough. It's tough when we're trying to do the amount of, you know, Mm -hmm. miles and hours that we all do. Yeah, and it's week. also like it's everyone everyone's case is different too because it depends on like how long you've been with the person, how long you've been riding and how like you eased into the situation that you're in now, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like you woke up this morning and you were like, "Danielle, I'm going to ride my bike 14 hours a week every week," you know? But like there was a time where you rode less or maybe there was a time where you rode more, right? And like um 
I think like we're also different based on like the jobs that we have. Like my work schedule allows me to ride my bike a lot. I'm like very lucky about that. And because I have time during the day to ride my bike, that means that the time, and that's the time when uh, Jocelyn, my wife is working, then at night I can have time to hang out with her. Cause like the only thing I do more than ride bikes is hang out with Jocelyn, really. But that is because my schedule like really allows it because I have that time during the day. Everyone might not be in that situation. So it becomes harder for me. Jocelyn and I have been together for 13 years and we've been, we've been through like the darkest of dark times together, like the lowest of lows together. And there've been times where like I was in a much worse place than I am now mentally and physically. And she understands what writing does for me and like what it gives to me in terms of like happiness and what it's just a hill has done for like, you know, me like helping like build a community and like finding friends. Like, I mean, Cal and Sam, I didn't know you guys beforehand. Brian, Mm -hmm. we knew each other, but like we didn't really know each other. Right. It's because of bikes that we've all came together really. And like, so that is where I stand that like, there's very, it's very rarely where I tell Jocelyn and I do say tell, cause I kind of, am like, Hey, I'm going for a ride that she's like, okay. Most of the time she's just like, okay, don't be out for like six hours. We have something to do at two o'clock. And I'm like, okay, I'll ride for three hours instead of six. But that's like, you know, what kind of sacrifice is that? That's not like a, a real, I, and I feel uh, privileged that way. And I know it's, it can't be that easy for everyone. Um, but that just comes from a place of like my perspective and knowing that like there was a point in my life where like I was in a dark place and I weighed 250 pounds and like now I don't because I ride my bike and like I'm happy because I spend time outside. And Jocelyn's like, okay, like do that so that you're not like a miserable piece of shit. Like, cause I could. It wouldn't take much it's for me to just go right back into that, you know? And that's a comp, like, that comes with 13 years of, like, being together and, like, talking it out and, like, understanding that perspective. And so, I don't know. It, it is, you're right. It's hard. I mean, it's a very, like, sensitive subject and we all, like, see it differently and our significant others who aren't here, but we're talking about them. And who knows? Maybe they are watching, but hopefully not. I mean, hopefully we want viewership up. (laughs) Yeah, actually, I thought maybe we could cut this also, but uh, um, we could see if our significant others want to record like a little two. Oh, I like that voice memo. I like that. Cut it into the podcast. Yeah, it would. I would have to. I would ask Jocelyn. She'd be like, "Yeah, sure." And then I have to be like, "No, could you please?" And then maybe she would. Um, But I like that idea. Yeah, but I think for me, uh, so my partner Sarah is actually a cyclist. Yeah, Uh, we met at the bike shop where I worked. Um, and our first date together was a hundred mile ride. Adorable. Um, but even so it can still, uh, just you two on the hundred mile ride. Yeah. Damn. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, great way to get to know someone. Yeah. Just talk to them for six or seven hours. Yeah. Uh, but, um, even though Sarah's a cyclist, we still, you know, uh, run into, I think the same issues that you guys are talking about, um, because she might sometimes, some years she'll ride a lot less than I will. She's had some health setbacks while we've been together. Um, and the, I'm more focused sometimes on racing. Like I want to go fast and Sarah really just enjoys long endurance rides. She doesn't like yep. to do, you know, super hard efforts or anything like that. And so even when we're out riding together in the back of my head, I'll be thinking I'm not getting enough of a workout. I need yep. to like you know, do some intervals or something really to get ready for my race next month. But, um, so I do feel that tension sometimes and, um, you know, Sarah will want to do, uh, to her credit, she'll want to do centuries and stuff like that with me. But sometimes I'm like, well, I really, I want to do a century, but I want to go faster. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, it is like you said, I think about finding balance like this fall. Um, I decided that I would, uh, ride, one week and go hiking with her the next and, and oh like in every like other that. type so of I thing started doing every yep. other type of thing even though i only had uh one day off a week you know yep. i kind of figured that it's the fall I'm not racing cross or anything for a while so i can yep. like take a month or two to spend some more time with sarah 
Um, and to your, like your point, John, I think Sarah also does understand that being a cyclist is central to my uh, sense of it's everything. identity. Yeah. I am the <laughs> butt. So identity, my sense of self-worth, I think yeah. is really yeah. tied to how many miles I put in sure. or kind of wattage I can push. Maybe that's not the best metric, but, uh, um, maybe not the like <laughs> least toxic metric, right. but I mean like, yeah, I, I totally am on board. Like, right. yeah, my, I don't know if I measure my worth in miles, but, but it, there is something to it. Like there's a sense of accomplishment, yeah. right? Like, I went out and I rode or I rode this fast or yeah. Yeah. Cycling has definitely given me, uh, I think like you're saying better, uh, higher sense of accomplishment than yeah. anything else in my life. Yeah. Um, and that's, so, yeah. So yeah. Sharing that. Right. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I, I like talking about stuff like this. I think I mentioned it like when we were like talking off the podcast, cause like every cycling podcast talks about FTPs and like, it's interesting, but like, mm-hmm. this is what it's like, it's about this too. This like, is a real, yeah, this subject. is like real. Yeah. This is and, real life. Man. Yeah. I like, I want to be vulnerable, baby. You know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're getting into it. Cut me down. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, is it, like always like a growing process that changes like as your relationship changes. Yeah. But that's sort of like how I hope that's sort of how I view like everything in life. Right. Is like you're constantly like moving with the ebb and flow and things shift a little bit. They change and you grow with them and like you continue to like learn based on your own experiences and the experiences that you share with your significant other or whoever with just the four of us. Right. And it's like, I mean, what can you do much better than that? I don't know. I can't. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Anything else anyone I, wants to add? Yeah, I could add more. Okay. Um, yeah. Let, so, like, what both of you just said about, like, understanding your partners and, and knowing what's important to them and how your partners know that being on your bike is just, like, integral to who you are and that you need to spend at least X amount of hours a week doing, you know, this activity that just makes you so happy and keeps you at peace. And it, it staves off so many other things, physical, mental, whatever. Um, and, uh, my wife definitely knows that about me as well. Like I'm newer to cycling. I've only been doing it for a few years now, but already she knows that like, yeah, this is important to me. Yeah. This is a big thing. I do need to spend, she understands and, and I appreciate that very much that she understands that I need to spend X amount of time on the bike each week. Yeah. Um, without going way overboard, which I mean, I, I get that. I definitely get yeah. that. Um, I'm a man who strives for balance right. in life. Um, I also have another like major hobby, which is playing music. What if and you like, in, what if it was something like, Model airplanes. Oh, make model airplanes. Well, actually, oh no, no. My wife's into more hobbies on in that realm, like uh-huh. uh, crafts, and she did just more recently get into uh, like miniature stuff. Really, Min- miniatures? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's neat. Cool. I think it's really cool. I didn't yeah. know anything about it until a couple of years ago. Yeah, but it's cool. Um, but you play in bands, multiple. Yeah, bands. Yeah, playing multiple bands. Yeah, uh, always have. Um. One wanna, of my I don't want to say you I play will, in, but you play slash played in one of my favorite bands of all time. The yeah the, the Providence Brass Band. Yeah, the Providence Brass Band. Yeah, yeah, truly, funny. truly, truly. It's good. So, yeah, Brian plays. Um, Brian Brian yeah. is great at playing drums. Do you play oh. any other instruments? Um, I mean, I can. I used to play guitar and bass and yeah. piano yeah. more so than I do now. I can yeah. still tinker around and. You know, many people don't realize that the Play piano chords, but piano is also a percussion instrument. I'm it, sure you it love. Is. That's a that's a good music fun fact. Yes, it is. Yeah, you know, Very something nice. that you hear in like seventh yeah. grade. It's like a trick question on it's a pop like quiz. It's like a uh, penguin is a bird. Oh, no. Right? No. <laughs> what? But it doesn't fly. Yeah, true. All birds are supposed to fly. What about an ostrich? Uh, I think they fly in little spurts. 
No. <laughs> they're, no. Like a, they're like a turkey. They can just they, uh, are, they hop a little they're bit. They're just jumping. <laughs> they are so... Look at the way an ostrich is shaped. You think that thing flies? It's like a basketball with like a fucking long neck. No, I know. It. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Dude, when they run though, when an ostrich runs, so off topic, when an ostrich runs, do their little wings flap? They fucking better or they're losing. They do. Out. Yeah. They do, right? they do. Yeah, yeah, I think they do. Wouldn't just be that a little arrow. Help. So technically if both feet are off the ground and the legs are flapping, they're flying. Yeah. The um technically. <laughs> the Apple Watch would be able to track that for them. <laughs> Let's get them some Apple Watches <laughs> then. All right. Both legs off the ground at the same time. <laughs> Listen up. Tim how much Apple. how much time do they spend on a day in flight? Do you think this is the, a job for the Apple Watch? Is this yeah. an ad for the Apple well, Watch probably, that we well, don't know all right. about? So if an ostrich were to wear an Apple Watch, would uh -huh. it go around the neck or the, <laughs> or the, or the ankle? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, or would they have to wear two on each ankle? One no, on each, you wouldn't one on have each to ankle. wear two. No human wears two. <laughs> Why would an ostrich have to wear two? Um, well, it's, I like, think it's it like left side power meters versus uh, uh, yeah. dual. Well, I don't know. No, it's it's you know, don't you own an Apple Watch? Yeah. Do you wear two? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm not an ostrich. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> different anatomy. And neck. I think yes, they would wear it on neck. the neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Slightly. neck, neck. Yeah, you think they'd be on the neck. Yeah, but well, because then they could still look at it because they could be like, you know, well, yeah, that, this yeah, is more for the, the video the, viewers, the, but this is like, they're like looking down at the watch. Like it's like down here, but they could bend their neck way more than I can be at the very base of the neck. So they could start, yeah, yeah. start their yeah. activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a, like a choker, uh, yeah. like a choker neck yes. at the base. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Pretty hip. Yeah. Hot topic shit. Hot topic is hip, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah. So we were vulnerable, and then we got silly about the I, ostrich. Do we want to go back to being vulnerable before we talk about cold weather riding? I would. Well, I would say something. Yeah, well, you're more than seems like. Do you want to say something? I was going to say kind of silly, also silly, but on the same on the on top. I'm all for being silly. Uh, I did crash my girlfriend out once uh, oh, no. on a ride. Oh wow! <laughs> so this is more of not what not to do. But yeah, we we're coming up to a, <laughs> we were riding in Maine, and we came up to a we we're coming up to an intersection, uh -huh. and. Uh, I think I pointed left and said, oh, oh. turning right. Yeah. So we turned into each other. Classic. She fell off her bike. I stayed up. Damn. Um, Hard. She, yeah. She banged her, her uh, coccyx pretty well. Damn. Uh, bruised it. She was off the bike. I End think, of the ride? For a couple. Of, yes. <laughs> End of the ride. Uh, bystander gave her. <laughs> um, yeah. How long had you been seeing each other? <laughs> oh, this was... Uh, Two summers ago, so oh, okay. we'd been together five, six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's good. So, that sucks. Not your one. Mm. No, no. I don't know if Jocelyn would ever ride with me again because <laughs> it's like rare. Like Jocelyn enjoys to ride her bike, but it's like you know more rare. She'll go yeah. on her sip and spin rides, and but she always like hangs towards the back, and she's intimidated by if she if like I was the one, she'd be like, I'm not riding with you. Yeah, it did take Sarah. Uh, Couple months, I think, to get comfortable, right? To trust me again sure. out there in terms yeah. of like giving directions and giving to getting to man. Close. I overlapped Leon's wheel the other day, like my whole front rim overlapped <laughs> his like rear wheel. I, I don't know how I didn't go down. Wow. You touched what I, I, t I swear, his the rubber on his tire touched the hoop on my oh, wow. that's how much we overlapped. <laughs> I just got way too close. And overlapped them and like it was either go like into the brush on the side of the road or like come left and fuck. And it was like, yeah, it was, yeah. it was, there was a second where I was like, I'm going down. <laughs> fuck. The whole group was behind me. We were like out towards the front, but yeah. now I stayed up. Um, but yeah, your, back to you. Your heart's just like immediately. Yeah, absolutely. In shoots your brain. Right up. Yep. Shoots right up. Uh, so like managing time with other aspects of life and yeah. significant other is definitely very hard to do when, when we want to be doing, you know, this activity so much. And I can be the first to admit, like, it's, I'm not always great at it. I push oh, some other either. things aside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whether it be, you know, maybe time with my wife, mm -hmm. um, or at least time that I could be doing something else with my wife or, 
other work or other friendship things or things around the house, whether it be yard work or like bigger projects. Um, but for me, a way that I try to manage it is that we have a shared calendar. Oh, nice. So I can see, so we can see each other's, uh, you know, personal calendar as well as work calendar. Uh, and then I so, so I'm basically always kind of keeping track and keeping an eye on the week or two ahead, um, just to see what's going on, what nights we're going to have together, you know, cause we, cause we both do work the same schedule more yeah. or less, you know, work during the day and then have nights together for dinner and hang time and whatever. Um, so I try to always keep up with the calendar, always checking the weather so that I know for me what my exercise schedule is going to look like with gym days versus riding days, um, what days I might take off as a rest day you could, based on would calendar Would you consider yourself weather. a weather obsessive? Because I would consider myself a weather uh, obsessive. I look at the weather way too much. All because of riding. Yeah. I don't know if I would say I'm obsessive. All the time. You me? probably look at it more than me. Oh. I thought I thought you were gonna say yes. That's why I asked the question. I was like, I'm ready for him to be like, Yep, I look uh, at it all the time. I feel like I'm maybe more map obsessive. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I because I, I know we also like to look at the looking wind. at a map. Both you and yeah. I have talked about the wind a lot. I'm looking at yeah. I'm looking at all aspects of the weather. No, that's not true. Not all aspects of the weather. Yeah. That would include like Dew point. I'm never looking like at the, the dew point. The pollen pressure. rating, no. all sorts of stuff. I'm not looking at the pollen. But rating. yeah, just temperature. If, the, if your phone's precipitation like, it's, it's, and there's wind. too much pollen, don't ride your bike. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Air quality <laughs> low. It's it's 80 degrees. I'm going outside. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? So that's just like, so that was something in my share mind. Share calendar is a great idea. When I share a calendar with everyone here for <laughs> rides. I don't share a calendar with Jocelyn. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm getting more Should notifications than ever now because of all the shared calendars, and now that includes an IG calendar as well. Yeah, uh, the the notif the group chats and notifications, and you, I just I'm on do not disturb all the time. Yeah, just don't disturb me. I look at my phone too much anyway, so I don't want a buzz because in three minutes I'm going to pick up my phone and look at it anyway. Right. So right, but yeah, no, I yeah. So I I also told Danielle that this is one of the topics we we're going to be talking about tonight. And so she is going to watch. <laughs> she might. <laughs> Zoom in. <laughs> but uh, what she said, I said, do you, do you have any, any thoughts on, yeah, the, on the topic? And she brought up something very good, which, which kind of comes up every so often between us in, in regards to like maybe me mismanaging my time a little bit where just because they're spending let let's let's say i i worked all day and i rode my bike and then the time th that i spent with her is just like i don't know eating dinner and like running errands or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like sure that's time together but that time together is not the same as going quality, out for a nice hike together quantity, or quality yeah so yeah. it's quality yeah. over quantity like yeah. And I'm definitely guilty of not really balancing that well enough yeah. at this point. Mm -hmm. And I need to be better. I mean, yeah. I think and, that's a great point. And re really just that, that quality over quantity is like a huge factor. Cause you, you could, you know, you could fill up your schedule and have it laid out so perfectly. But if, if the quantity and, and you know, the content of that time together right. is not meaningful, then the fact that you flawlessly laid out this time table for everything right. doesn't matter quite as much. Watching every episode of Great British Bake Off while staring at your phone is not quality time. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> exactly. Is that what you're telling me? Because I have I do that a lot. Well, great. It is, it is I mean, the best show on TV. It's a great show. <laughs> and this, we're in the middle of a season right but now. if you watch Great British Baking together... Mm -hmm. Without either of you being on your phones, yes, and you were like mentally together, yes, that's a lot more meaningful. And then you're like, let's bake one of those yeah. things. Hell yeah, you're that's great. You're, now we're you're taking yeah. in that's the great. same. Hell yeah, taking in the same stimulus. Right. Your brains are thinking about the same thing. Right. Then all of a sudden you're connected. Right. You start talking about things. 
And also, Danielle's been to bike rides that we've had. Yeah. Yes, Danielle likes to ride her bike. Yep. So, you know, yeah. it's all... We do bike rides together sometimes. That's great. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, recently, I recently asked her if she likes riding a bike. Hmm. Never, never asked her. What was the never answer? Asked. She said she didn't know. Love that. I love that about her. <laughs> it's so like, hey, much. babe, you know what? Uh, <gasps> it, it's been like two years now, actually. We've been riding together. That we've been, you know, that I, you know, we, we, you know, you got a bike and we've been riding together. Uh, do you like it? Do you like riding a bike? And she went, huh? I don't know. I love that so much. <laughs> That's great. And it, it definitely was not a no. Yeah, right. It just definitely right. wasn't like a hell yes. I yeah. I want to be right. on my bike as much as you. Yeah. It wasn't that. Huh. I but know. it was like, that's yeah, jury's still out. That's very honestly, that's very sweet because it's honest, but also, she does ride with you. Yeah, right. Yeah. So like, I love. I just love that. I don't yeah. know, but I'll do it. Like you know, I'll ride. I'll ride if you want to ride. You know, that's what it seems like. Maybe sometimes. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Right. Maybe. On occasion, I think she likes it, but just yeah. not like. Yeah. I think she's also gauging mm-hmm. her answer against. How much she knows I like it. Oh, yeah. Sure. So the right. yes would have been different. So she went with Adam. That's know. like me but expecting she likes everyone to love Adam Sandler as much as I love Adam Sandler. Like, it's just not going to happen, you know? <laughs> People aren't going to like bikes as much as, you know, like, it's just not going to... It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> sad. <laughs> really sad. Um, okay, so we sort of alluded to it earlier. Maybe maybe this is a good time of year to spend more time with shit and others because it's cold outside and you have to spend less time outside on your bike. That's a good, like, you know what? Okay, it's May through August, you're not going to see me. <laughs> <laughs> September through April, I'll be inside more. Um, but I am going to get a Zwift subscription and yeah. we can, no, really? I'm, I mean, am I? I don't know. I was more like doing a bit still. I gotcha. Um, I think I, I think I will. Um, in next year, I don't know. Maybe train and road. If you convince me, train and road's better. I really don't know too much about either systems. I, uh, if you haven't heard this podcast before or you don't know me, I don't like to ride on the trainer. Um, I'm really kind of snobby about it sometimes. I haven't ridden any of my miles on the trainer uh, this year, and that is my plan to finish this year that way. But I do think I'm going to get. Uh, a smart trainer and something, some type of program to mm-hmm. use. But for now, fuck that. And let's, talk, I want to talk about riding outside in the cold. So, right, uh, we live in Rhode Island and it gets cold here. We're heading into the cold season. Yesterday it was 80 degrees. Today it was 55. And um, I have written down here, I don't know, I feel like, uh, like it's, it, it does get colder, right? And so, November isn't that bad, but like usually December through February is pretty brutal around here. Yeah. Well, from like, as a commuter, occasionally yeah. November can get rough because you'll get those sure. days when it's at, at night, especially early, forty in degrees yeah. and raining, and that's like the worst. Right. Um. Well, super easy to get cold, but yeah, we are head that way. Where if yeah. you you need to change up your wardrobe a bit. If, uh... Yeah. So I want to talk about like how everyone here tackles that, that the cold season coming in. Do you spend a lot more time inside? Um, I don't want to focus on that as much as I want to focus on like, if you do choose to ride outside, how you cope with the cold weather. And I also asked our what's WhatsApp group. And I want to go through the little comments that people shared. But first, like um, Sam, do you choose to ride outside in the winter? I know that you have Zwift or are you just like, no, I'm going to ride inside. Do you yeah. have a cutoff point or like what's your perspective on riding outside during the, the cold? Yeah, total cutoff point. I think you were saying like December, February, it gets pretty brutal there. Yeah. And I was trying to think about back to last year when I was just training during the winter um, and trying to get long rides in on the weekend because work during the week, what I was doing. And I remember it being super cold in the morning which is when I really want to go out and ride. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to ride outside and I'd just ride in the trainer when it was super cold in the morning. Um, but I, I, I remember I could have totally waited for the afternoon to like get a decent ride sure. in and mm. bundle up a little bit more, but I'm was just way too impatient to clip in at 11 AM when I'm waking up at five thirty AM on the right. weekend. So right. I would just take off on the trainer. I love the, I mean, I like the trainer. It's, I, th- I think it's good just to have, um, like this morning I rode it before work and, I, I like it to, to have it's good for different stuff but um yeah I think this this winter I'm expecting to ride a lot on Zwift 
Um, but still looking to, I'm looking to ride a lot more off-road too. So looking to get my kit dialed for, for gravel and yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I like riding in the woods in the winter. You can sort of escape mm-hmm. the elements a little bit more. Yeah. I feel like that's something that my, at least my, I, my uptick in like gravel, that term off-road riding, uh, on like my non-road bike in the woods goes up way more in the cold months to stay out of the. Out of the yeah, wind's yeah. not in your face as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more trees, less wind. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. So, but for my, I don't know if I could d- dive into my like my kit or like what I'm liking for winter stuff. But I this past year I had like uh, just like normal gravel shoes that had just holes in the end, obviously. Yeah. And then I would put over the just like the covers. I think I had like a pearl Izumi covers, like a winter cover. Yeah, which was super nice. But I just recently bought winter cycling shoes Hell which yeah. i'm stoked on yeah because i think those will because it's still on a long ride with those shoes it was still like by the, like three four hours in like brutal toes are yeah. hurting mm-hmm. oh yeah so i think the winter shoes plus these covers will be sweet um so i'm stoked for those yeah yeah I, that's a good tip some people if like because obviously cycling is expensive so like getting a trainer is expensive and paying for zwift and getting new gear so like yeah i personally do have a pair of like winter road shoes but like you can, i have in the past also just like taped up my summer shoes because mm-hmm. there are tons of vents in the bottom of cycling shoes so like keep your your shoes like ventilated but you can just like take those soles out tape them up a little bit that sort of helps a little uh yeah cal what about you like yeah riding in the you 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 will ride outside when it's cold i will yeah, yeah. um there was a couple of years actually when I didn't own a car when I was living in Boston, so yeah. commuting to work uh, year round, um, but also uh, doing all sorts of training and road riding outside yeah. as well. Um, in terms of shoes, I don't own winter shoes either. Uh, I'll just do really thick socks yeah. and um, neoprene shoe covers. Yeah. Um, Tends to keep me ride. My most important piece of kit, I would say, is my Merino. Uh, base layer the great uh, great piece wear that yeah. all the time i have a veloce wool jersey yeah uh, and then i have a um uh wind jacket that i just wear over that and that yeah. often is enough to keep me warm in the coldest uh temperatures nice um uh also have thermal bibs yeah. and uh thermal overtights as well the biggest issue i have is with my hands i'm mm-hmm. um, actually have a, uh what's called raynaud syndrome same yeah so yeah. uh fingers will go numb and white and right um so does it happen to your toes too or just your hands uh, it does happen to my toes too yeah. um my toes actually get it worse yeah they my feet hurt like hell when i'm warming back up from a cold ride yep. it doesn't really bother me as much when i'm out there pedaling gotcha um, I think just cause they go numb and then they're yeah, just, numb they're just and numb. that's it. But yeah. hands definitely like, uh, have a lot of issues with, yeah, you brought some things for so show and tell some props. You have like lobster claw gloves. Is that what uh, you got? No, oh so no, not Pearl quite. Zumi lobster claws are like the, um, a very popular option, yes. but these are from 45 North. They actually have, it's a four finger glove. There you go. Um, which, so a little easier to work your, your shift levers, your SDI levers now. Yep. Um, Still super warm. I can wear them with a uh, glove on another underneath. wool layer underneath. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that tends to help. Um, and then it's like a Bali clava that you got. Yeah, I got my another essential that I always recommend is the the neck warmer. Oh yeah, got to love a good warmer. neck warmer. Yep. And then the oh, uh, he's taking off the hat. The and you got, wow, look at this! The this is a cycling cap with, with the ear flaps. Ear flaps keeps you warm too. Yeah, so, that's nice. Um, yeah, it's kind of just some basics. Uh, yeah, I like you said. I swear by the merino base layer. Mm-hmm. I think, and some people think differently. Actually, someone in the group chat said basically the opposite of what I'm about oh. to say. But I think if I keep my core warm, it helps keep the rest of my body warm. That's in my experience. Um, some people said that keeping their head warm is like the most important, um, which might be the case for I. My head gets like super hot and i have to wear a very ventilated helmet like basically all year round except for when it's really cold i can wear like a more aero helmet Mm -hmm. um but yeah like i personally also i keep like a i keep a diary of what i wear in every ride that's under 60 degrees like today i rode and i was like okay i rode and it was this time and it was this temperature when i left and this wind and this is what i wore and what was the outcome based on what I wore uh-huh. and what effort I put out? And like today, 
I wrote down everything that I and I uh, my note was that I could have used toe warmers. Everything mm-hmm. else was good, thermal thermal arm warmers and like the you know right base layer and everything. But my toes were a little bit cold, and I could have worn toe warmers. And so like the next time I go and I ride in like similar conditions, I will be more confident about what I choose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And because I don't have a trainer, I'm like I've ridden outside in 20 degree weather mm-hmm. at like 4 a.m. That kind of sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm not. That seems kind of stupid in all uh, ret- uh, ret- in, in retrospect. In retrospect, yeah. thank you. <laughs> but it was something that I wanted to do, you know. And like I got through it because of the gear that I had. Brian, you ride outside in the cold. We've ridden together. Was You shared your coldest ride with us when we were talking about this. That was a ride that we did together. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, we yeah. did that together. With Brian and Jeremy. Brian and Jeremy Yeah, and uh, Marcus. And Marcus, yeah. And we were out in the trails of yeah. Rumford. Yeah. And it was cold. And it was freezing that day. But yeah. that, So that was that's a good example of like, well, we tried to get away from the cold by going in the woods. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which it definitely worked. It helped. And this past winter was my first winter um, riding off-road. And yeah, it's... It's significant. It's very Especially because the wind ticks it's up legit. in the winter. The wind like is so brutal because it's yeah. like quicker and just more bitter. So if you can yeah. hide from it. Yeah. 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 And what... I don't know if there's science behind this, but with wind chill, yeah. if you're going 30 miles, 20 miles an hour on your yeah. bike, is that... Adding to the wind chill? I don't wind chill. I think they talked about this in one of the Grand Tours. Really? Yeah, it was going to be so cold at the top of the mountain that, like, going down, descending the mountain, uh-huh. uh, they could get like frostbite. Uh, it was going to be is, so cold. But wind chill is just like a feels like temperature, right? Well, yeah, it feels like, but it's like it's still sapping that much heat away from your body. I think. It, okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I'm yeah, because it's meteorologist. No, <laughs> neither. Because air is not air is not transferring temperature as much as a liquid would, but but the if faster the air is moving and you're covered in sweat temp- and you're covered in sweat as well, yeah, the faster you're moving, regardless of whether or not there's wind, which there always will be some wind, you're going to be having temperature transfer heat transfer quicker. So yeah, I, I've I've been wondering the same thing. Like like what's the relationship of wind chill like Mm -hmm. yeah if if it's already 15 mile an hour winds yeah and you're going 40 down on a descent Mm -hmm. yeah is it gonna drop is it gonna drop like see the the wind chill by like another like 200 percent what it already was in my experience i don't even dress for the wind chill because to me the wind chill is bullshit once i'm moving Mm -hmm. like because i'm like you're not just going outside to like stand around right like you can do a recovery ride and maybe want to bundle up a little bit more. But if you're going to go out and hammer and like try to average like 220 Watts in an hour and a half, like you're going to be warm. Yeah. Like, like the one thing I have written down here is be bold, start cold. Like if you are starting a ride and you're hot, you're overdressed. Because yeah. you're going to get hotter if you're putting in an effort, yeah, right? That's yeah. good advice. I, yeah, because yeah. usually I start cold until I get to that first hill. Yeah. And then you're right. warmed up. Right. I um, go up. If, if it's cold, I'm going up Hillsdale right away. Right. Because it's like I know I'm going to go uphill and it's going to be a solid like five-minute effort at like putting down power as opposed to just like getting on a flat road and just like, okay, you're in the wind and you're doing 150 watts at like 22 miles per hour. You know, it's just like mm-hmm. it's cold and it's not. And there's also different ways of looking at it, I think. I mean, this is going to be a lot of just jumping around, I guess. But, like, if you start in the morning, like Sam was saying, it's going to get warmer. But if you start in the afternoon, it's going to get colder, right? So, like, layers are very important and bringing layers with you, being able to take things off or add things on. Because, like, you're not just going to want to, like, put on your heaviest jacket and it's going to get 10 degrees warmer. You're going to be shit out of luck. You're going to be sweating your ass off and it's not going to be an enjoyable ride. At least for me, I get, like, hot and, like, bothered and i don't want to ride as hard so yeah yeah one one thing i wanted to say too i saw i thought it was cool i saw a couple professional triathletes doing they like cut holes in a trash bag Mm -hmm. and like would put that under their like windbreaker or whatever Mm -hmm. and wear that and then once they like would start in the morning and once they like got warmer they would just chuck it probably not the most environmentally friendly way of keeping warm but yeah worked it seemed uh Former guest of the podcast, Jake Saunders, says subway bags on feet. And that reminds me of that. Oh, yeah. Just like mm-hmm. the bags from Subway, the long, <laughs> skinny bags 
put them on your feet and then put those in your shoe. And it is it works as like a wind. He's told me about this before. It like cuts the wind mm -hmm. and it holds all your sweat in. You know, and you're gonna have like a soggy subway bag, but like And you need to order two subs. Yeah. Yeah, but that shit's free. <laughs> Cycling shit is so expensive. But is he stopping on a ride and getting a sandwich? <laughs> I think he hopefully he just has the bags at home. Hopefully. He's just going to well, Subway, grabbing breakfast. I'm trying I don't to know. think. Tell let us know, Jake. <laughs> Uh, if anyone gets newspapers, newspaper bags would be like the same. Yeah, yeah. or well, pros actually, used to do that traditionally. Yeah, yeah uh, stuff newspapers in their jerseys. People would hand newspapers to cyclists as they were starting the descent. Yeah, oh, to put up there to put up their jersey. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I form. just saw that on yeah. a GCN yeah. video like last week. Yeah, but put, or like a Manila folder, or just something. Yep, mm -hmm. and then you can chuck it later. What's the uh, cream like the Love cream that, that people put on their legs too? Yeah, that's embrocation. Cal told me about this um, last year. Which gotcha. is like a warming cream. I think it Embro the, cream, dude. Yeah, I forget yeah. the main ingredient, but it's the same as like pepper spray and Right. Um, so it's a little bit of capsaicin. Yeah. And capsaicin. uh essentially it's like aquaphor with like capsaicin mm -hmm. in it. So it creates like a thin, thick thin and thick layer if that makes sense <laughs> like a you know but it also has like that heat application to it almost like yeah. the hot and icy hot yeah exactly yeah um, and really i think it was invented probably for cyclocross so you've got like 40 degree right. weather and raining wet conditions right um, you still so want you your knees out your so you can right yeah you don't yeah. want to have to wear warmers right because um, it does for me yeah. like i don't mind wearing leg warmers but like they do i do feel more constricted than having mm -hmm. my knees like out in the open. What about you guys? Like, do you feel more? There's definitely a level of too much of wearing too much. Like, there. Oh yeah. You gotta find the balance. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't have leg warmers. I have just like tight, like tights that I put over my bibs. Yeah. Um. But I've never found that they're like constricting. Honestly. Honestly, if anything, maybe like a little. You like them? Little springy. Who knows? <laughs> I, I kind of <laughs> like them myself. Yeah. Give me some extra yeah. walks. Yeah. yeah. Right. Who knows? All right. Yeah. Um, no, I know what you mean, though. You can definitely feel weighted down. I think it's um, more about the leg warmers because it, it gives you the extra cuff, like mm -hmm. mid-thigh. I don't like the cuff. Up, and it is the, over, up, it just high cuff. I don't like that. Yeah. I, it's it's doable, but like it, it just gets to me, you know? Uh, I would say if I was going out for an hour or two, it wouldn't bother me. But like yeah. I've done century in leg warmers. Yeah. And it just got really uncomfortable with mm -hmm. that cough, like up on my upper thigh. I was like, mm -hmm. not good, mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, not, not great. Um, yeah, I mean, quick answer is layers, obviously. Layers, yeah. But you know, everyone knows that. Um, I would say for me, uh, ears definitely are important. Oh, good. Idea. Yeah. Um, so neck warmer, yeah, super important. I also have one of those, like a, like a thermal cap that goes over the ears as well mm -hmm. yeah. that I only pull out on the coldest days. Yeah. Um, yeah. Layers, layers, layers. And being able to, like you said, and, you know, if you're starting early, it's going to be cold and warm up. So you got to be able to take layers off and right. put them in your pockets. Um, yeah. I had another, I had another thing to add to this, but now I'm not remembering. I'm going to go to the group chat and see but, yeah. some people what they gave say? serious answers. Okay. Some people, Subway bags wasn't serious. Is that what you're? Subway bags was serious. I know. No, I know subway bags are serious because the He's last time you. we rode with Jake was Sam and I rode with him last week. He told us about it. <laughs> yeah. He told me more than once about this. All right, what are, what are some more serious character. answers? Um, some more serious answers. Uh, I think Cal Roberti was serious when he said grow a beard. Well, I think he was serious. I've been trying for 37 years and I can't. So. Uh, Glenda, Glenda's response was that only works for some of us. So obviously, <laughs> like if you are not good at growing a beard, right? Cal grows a great beard. So um, he's a skier too. That's a, that's yeah, a ski thing. That's a ski the, thing. The, with the wind. Yeah. Um, Glenda also noted. So Glenda was the one that said the most important thing to keep warm is your head, but don't, don't overdo it since cold and wet is way worse than just cold. That's a good point to me about overdressing is like if you get too sweaty yeah. or if you're wearing like I have a couple of windbreakers too, like you mentioned, Cal, but I have one that's like uh, fully waterproof, like a gore windbreaker. Mm -hmm. And if it's hot and sweaty in there, it's it holds all that moisture in and then you get cold on a descent, you unzip it and then that cold air gets in there. It's like yeah. a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's one of the biggest things for people to learn when it comes to layers is 
yeah, sure, you need to learn how to layer. Yeah. But the the fine art to it is the timing of taking the layers off. Yes. If you, if you know, you well, th- knowing, really knowing ahead of time if you are or aren't going to need to take them off during the ride and planning and knowing when to take them off so you don't run into the cold and wet yeah. because of your own sweat. It's almost Scenario. like yeah. it's terrible. Like when people are like, if you feel dehydrated, it's like too late. It's almost the same thing. Like if you yeah, feel overheated, sure. it's too late. Yeah. yeah. You know, Sam, did you climb Lincoln Gap with a, uh, like a down jacket on? Uh, no, I had like this. Cause like, Brian and Adam did. And that shit is wild. Yeah. Wild. That's, I had, it's l- fucked up. I had tights it's on. so hot. <laughs> yeah. It was hot. I was dripping sweat. Yeah. I mean, it was cold. Like we started and it was cold. That was yeah. the, my most recent coldest ride was the last day of our trip. We talked mm-hmm. about it on the last episode of the podcast, but it was like 34 degrees when we started. Yeah. And I started with that down jacket, but I took that shit off and. 10 minutes yeah i was like we're just climbing we're in vermont we're just climbing you know i like, think i followed your lead there yeah with t- when i took that off take that off yeah. um ryan holston I'm, I'm, I'm sorry ryan if i'm not pronouncing your name he he uh said save money on cycling specific gloves and buy these and he sent just like a pair of uh waterproof winter gloves which mm-hmm. i think is a good idea you can sort of get around the higher price point of like cycling things that are like you know ramped up 200 300 percent and get something that yeah, you know, is multi-purpose not just for cycling? That does remind me, though, there is one uh, option for winter that I have never tried. But there's these like basically shields, these neoprene covers, the that, hood covers, hood covers yes. that go over your levers. That's a great point. Um, and yeah. I've heard really good things about those. Me too, but never used them myself. Does your dad have those? I don't think my dad does. No, no. but I know certain people who use them. I ride with some gravel people that use them a lot, mm-hmm. and they swear by them. Yeah, swear by mm. them. Because they allow you to still wear a lightweight glove if you want to get to your phone or something. But then it's basically, if, if anyone's not familiar with it, it's like a whole glove that like covers your hood. So when you go and you reach for your hoods and your levers, your hand is like covered and shielded by this I think fabric. I've mainly seen that on mountain bikes, maybe? Yes. Okay. Yes, you have. Yeah. Um, it just seems a little, I mean, I, I would try them, but it, the thought that I've had is like, especially with like road hoods. Mm. I feel like your hands are so in there that if if you needed to get your hand out yeah. quick for some reason, you might <laughs> yeah. be kind of stuck heard, for a split second. I've heard yeah. that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I want my hands. Uh, yeah. I, Seems I mean, a little I've got some pretty good, like, thicker Rafa gloves that are, like, deep winter gloves that are pretty solid. Yeah. yeah. I got the Pactimo, or however you say it, um, yeah. deep winter gloves, yeah. and they, they were great. I haven't had issues with those. And you can't, like, you know, I've also <laughs> tried, like, when I was first figuring it out, I was trying to wear, like, multiple layers of gloves and there's also a certain cutoff point where it's doing damage to your circulation maybe not damage but it's like cutting off the circulation because you're wearing three layers of gloves Mm -hmm. and it's making you so cold because like blood isn't pumping in so to me same thing with shoes i like to only wear one layer of socks with some solid shoes maybe winter ones or ones that the holes are taped up and then try to put something on over it like a booty because if you're trying to wear like two or three pairs of socks like you're cutting off circulation your shoe's not going to fit right and that's a recipe for disaster. It's not comfortable. It's not going to make you want to do it. Um, Paul Anderson, uh, very he got very specific here. Hooded base layer from Alaskan Hard Gear. Hood fits under your hat and helmet. Don't use up any jacket pocket space when it's warm enough to remove the hood. Sizes run large. Wow. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, hooded base layer. So I've he's never saying- had a hooded base layer. I have a base layer with a tall, tall... Um, turtleneck. It's like yeah. really tall. Like it can come up over like my, neck warmer and face mask. Yeah, kind of all in one. A tip, but then yeah. it's easy to like pull down. Yeah, you just pull down. So yeah. he's saying then once you get a little bit warmer, then you take the hood off. Yeah, yeah. So this, it's essentially that, but it has a hood attached to it, yeah. so it goes all the way like from the base layer up over yeah. your head. That's kind of nice. Yeah, sounds nice. No, Cal's no. Into it. <laughs> I don't want to. Well, I don't want to. No, offend, yeah, I, mean, I don't want to offend Paul, but just. Uh, from a cycling fashion uh, standpoint, I I don't think I could do that. Oh well, I mean, yeah, just because like if there's if plenty of things. You got the, I've seen people riding like that, and yeah, you know, when you've got the I don't know something about having the your hood and then your hat over your hood and like yeah, coming on that just well, you're really doing know. a lot of demonstrating today. I like <laughs> yeah, it. You brought the gloves. You're pulling. You brought. <laughs> you didn't even know about the hood thing. You wore a hoodie. Yeah, yeah, that's good coincidence. But um, no, I just don't like the look of it. Can't. Jeff Lapierre mentions Polar Tech fabric. 
Hmm. Pro equals Prolar Tech Fabric. Was this like a joke he was trying to make? Some people in here tried to make jokes, you know. Leon said, just Zwift until Summer decides to show its face again. Leon, I said I didn't ask that shit. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Chris Prez Lopes says, move to a warm state. Not that easy, Chris. Sorry, you can't just move to a warm state. I said I was going to clown you. I legitimately told people I was going to clown them. Um, I would have expected Chris to have a great answer for you. Me too. I mean, I'm sure he does have a great answer. Yeah. But sometimes people just like want to get a laugh, and I get it. You know, he's right. Commuter as well. So he's right. Expect. Yeah. He's got um, some answers in there. Leon then added like you know more layers, knee warmers. It depends. He said under sixty, below forty. So he's got like a plan. Mm-hmm. To me, that's like why I keep the diary. So like I sort of have a plan, like. 50 range this is what i'm going with 30 range this is what i'm going with you know and so like i don't know so data collecting yeah are you gonna take that and then either uh we can have some kind of guide john's guide to yeah i'd love, to provide, I'd love to provide a guide or if we actually turn it into data we can an algorithm you can make your own app yeah john's guide to Ooh, like the silk attire pressure calculator yeah, plug in john's. Yeah. yeah john's weather cal- weather yeah gauge calculator temp, yeah dew point <laughs> so the problem the only problem is is i think i run hot okay. when i ride because mm-hmm. i get like i think you do a little I, bit based on our discussions of layers i'm in the always past. like like brian said like take stuff off early i'm taking shit off like i'm wearing gloves for like 10 minutes and then i'm like fuck i shouldn't have worn <laughs> these fucking gloves like i'm that hot like yeah. i don't know why because in my like when i'm not riding i'm like a cold little baby. Like I get cold all the time. <laughs> like I, I need to like be bundled up, but no, not on the bike. Not when I'm working. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's not really a, maybe if we all do it, then we can have, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I find data. A, diary data. Data. a pivotal temperature range for me, uh, for when, when I know that I need to go, like full shoe covers versus toe covers yes. versus just warmer socks and no covers at all is like the 55 to 50 range where it's like above 55, nothing. Yep. The small range of 50 to 55, I can do just toe covers Yep. and then 50 below full shoe covers. Interesting. That's what I've found over the past two winters. See, so I'm even looking at like 50 degrees and sunny versus 50 degrees and yeah. cloudy. Oh, absolutely. It's different, yes, absolutely. Right? Cause 32 degrees and sunny is way more manageable than like 40 degrees and cloudy and windy. Yeah. Right? Because like that's just bitter. Like 32 and sunny on a, and a nice day, regular wind would feel warmer. For sure. Than 40 and cloudy and windy. For sure. And that day in December also feels different than that day in March. Because in March, you've lived through February and it's sucked. And you're like, oh shit, it's getting a little bit warmer. And you're like ready. But today, it's like... 50 in november and you're like fuck it was 80 degrees yesterday right yeah. perspective is a motherfucker yeah yeah so that has something to do with it too i think another good thing uh that leon mentioned is cycling thermoses that's one thing i've ridden and put in and like had my bottles <laughs> freeze over um i've tried to put hot stuff i've used like the scratch with uh, apple cider uh flavored scratch and put warm but like if you're not using something that's insulated then your bottles might freeze over have you guys ever run into that Oh, of course, yeah. Um, actually, one tip is to flip them upside down. Uh, that way, the um, oh, really? The spout won't freeze. Oh, yeah, that's so a good idea. Still open it. They some, still holding your cage, okay? Out. I think so. Yeah, oh. maybe it depends on your cage, but yeah, that's one one tip. Good tip. Yeah. Hmm. Um, otherwise, I don't really know. Uh, I've I heard... put hot coffee in my bottles before. It makes okay. the bottle really weird and soft. Feels like you're getting BPA. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> there's go. a recipe for cancer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I remember you saying that you've had your bottles freeze before. Yeah. Uh, I have like the insulated bottles mm-hmm. and I have put warm water in them. In it the doesn't winter. take long. I just, uh, just kicked Harry. I had a really odd moment with Harry. I wouldn't say I kicked him. What the hell? I just startled him and then, and then he startled me back. Wow. No, it was okay. <laughs> it wasn't a kick. I didn't kick him. I didn't think, I didn't really think you kicked him. It's on video. Is he all right? He's holding one of his legs up now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. He just does that. Does he's he like do cute. That? Okay. Yeah, he just all like right, does right, that because right. he's cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's he's being cute. Yeah, he's just being he cute. He knows he's cute. Yeah, he knows. He's probably like, get me out of this yeah. fucking room 
Where is Jocelyn? Get me out of here. Hi, Harry. Oh, th so this ride that I pulled up from yes. that day. Yes. It was January 18th, 2022. Strava says 30 degrees. Nice. Partly cloudy. I don't remember the sun being out that day. Me either. I remember being overcast and us getting lost a good amount. Yeah, it was a fun ride. It was fun. Getting when we lost found those little and, weird like jumps, right? Yeah, that weird like yeah, little like, figure eight, like dirt. bowl pit area, yeah, dirt bowl and stuff. pit. Was, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Really yeah. fun. I yeah. scratched my derailleur so bad. Really? <laughs> on like right when we went when we went into trails on that ride. Yep. There was a big granite block like blocking the entrance, you know, so like a car wouldn't go in or whatever. Yeah. And I just skirted around it. <laughs> Sucks. Sucks. And I had just gotten that bike. It was like my third ride on that bike or something. Yeah. Yeah, I've been really careful ever since. As careful as I can be. I mean, right. what we're doing on those bikes. But it says 15.4 um, 15 15 average uh, wins and feels like 19. Wow. That was a cold one. It was a cold day. It was definitely a really cold how day. Did, how did but everyone get then, convinced to ride outside that day? Well, I think we're like, well, we'll go, we'll go off road. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go check out those uh, trails. Great. Yeah. Be great. But then, we, then we all wanted more miles. Yes. So we did like another ten miles on the road and just hammered, and it was like so cold. I like, I like the cold. <laughs> and and I remember that day, like I was, we had such a good time on that the main chunk of that ride. Yeah. And it was like, oh, it's amazing. It's like it's like twenty eight degrees, and I'm not even cold. Yeah. Off road riding is the shit. And then we all agreed we wanted more miles. So we went and hammered another 10 or 12 miles. I don't know what it was. And you were miserable. And Marcus and I were in the back just trying I to hang on. This. And absolutely miserable. And I legit was thinking that I should just sell my road bike. And I'm only going to do <laughs> off-road rides because this sucks so much. Wow. I was so Jesus. cold. And I was working so hard. Wow. Terrible. Any, any other cold weather pro tips anyone wants to share? Before we get out of here, any other final closing thoughts? I have a kind of like a devil's advocate. Oh, okay. Type mm -hmm. of scenario. Mm -hmm. All right. Devil's advocate. That's Al Pacino. Yeah, it is. Is that where that reference comes from? No, no. There's a movie called oh. Devil's Advocate, and oh. he was the devil. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. No, no one gets that. It's a really n niche reference, I guess. I could even be wrong, but sorry. Go ahead. Devil's advocate. Uh, could you kind of like purposely? overdress in the winter to do like temperature training so that high summer riding doesn't feel as bad no no i i like where you're going with this but you'd have to do it all you'd have to do it all the time yeah that's true yeah, that's not how yeah, yeah. Acclimatization like your body works. would get yeah. a like a it, it would just like fall back to the cold so unless you like, unless you were like getting what, like riding when it was like in in March and April, you'd also be having to put on like your yeah. thermals and shit yeah. and stay hot. Yeah, that's true. And then when it's keep ninety, you're like, year this round. is okay. Yeah, keep your yeah so when you're ninety, then then you're like, yeah, yeah, then your electric bill. You have to wait whatever. until July to take the jacket off. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you'd have to do it all the time, so you'd have to keep your house hot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't sleep hot. Oh, me either. <laughs> that's how you get nightmares. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Back it up for a second. <laughs> is that real? Uh, I don't know. Do you? I think it's, I it's real know. for me. Do you get more <laughs> nightmares when you try to sleep and it's warm? Yes, hundred wow. percent. Interesting. Wow. Have you been tracked? Do you have a diary about that? No, I never kept a diary. It's you know, just up there, up, there. up in the noggin. Um, I like when yeah, you, you look gotta, at the camera. Got to sleep cool, you know. Yeah. Hey, I'm trying to think of a of a line like sleep cool, ride hot. Some dumb <laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't know. Like be bold, That's not a start good one, cold, but, but you're trying to yeah, come up with that, your own. Yeah. I didn't come up with be bold, start cold. I'm not trying to like say I came up with that. Not that I thought you were saying that I was, but you get it. Like, stay hot, ride cool. Stay hot, ride cool. Is my devil's advocate theory. It doesn't work. But it I mean, doesn't. It yeah, it makes Try it. <laughs> try it. It was just a random thought I had today. <laughs> no, well, no, nah, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to convince anyone else to try it. Cal so quickly was just like, no. no it doesn't it. work no. that way. No. Nope. Nope. Not how not how bodies climb. Uh, you know, it was a thought. Yeah. It is an interesting thought. Yeah. I've seen athletes, like, tra athletes train for Kona, the world championship in yeah. Hawaii, and, like, in the middle of the summer wearing full long sleeve kits. 
training for Kona Hawaii because mm. it's going to be a hotter race. They're in full long sleeve kit. So that made that, me think of that. Honestly, well, it's yeah, kind I of mean, what Brian That's said, why I thought it, about it because yeah. I heard of like the kind of the temperature training. And yeah. Like, just like altitude training, you know. Yeah. Stuff like that. So, but maybe if you're doing, but I was thinking about it kind of opposite, it, not like six months in advance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. we should. Right. We should try it as a group. <laughs> should we do like like in this like this coming spring? The yeah. It's just a hill or early ride. summer. Go like really, really overdressed and just see who bonks first. <laughs> yeah, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see who like gets dehydrated first because you're just gonna be so yeah. sweaty. The chicken run. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like you're gonna pass out and like get hurt and ruin your bike. It just sucks. Well, we spend so many hours on the bike. Like, gotta do something to make it fun. Yeah, you're right. It's normally not fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, no, it sucks. Yeah. We love it though. Yeah, we love it. Don't we just love it? Um, okay, I feel good. Does everyone else feel good? Anything else I want to talk about? No. Uh, this guy's got another pro tip. Just um, going back. Angels to advocate. The- <laughs> uh, going back to the very beginning when I was talking about how I had COVID and was dealing yeah. with the muscle cramping, um, uh, Sam did make me feel better. We were talking one day and just saying, yeah, it's probably just the dehydration. Like just give it time and keep mm-hmm. hydrating. It'll come back. Make me feel better. Thank you. Yep. Um, but then also like I put it out there on Strava after a couple weeks of that happening and asked if anybody else had had that experience yep. post COVID and, uh, Johnny M was the only person that got back to me and said the same thing happened to him huh. and it took a couple the weeks. The intense cramps. Yes. Oh, interesting. interesting. And so, you know, I want to say a thank you to Johnny in case he oh, listens. Yeah. Thank you, no. Johnny. Yeah, that's Thanks. nice. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm sure it was like, you were like, fuck, like it's scary, you know? Something like yeah. that to happen. Yeah, like, it was, after it was still happening for like two weeks, it right. was just like, phew. Yeah. Maybe eventually. Well, the, the scary thing was that it was happening just from walking. Yeah. Like I could, I could walk Maybe around. Maybe COVID like, I is could, real. I could mosey around, but like <laughs> if I walked at a decent rate at all, I was, I could cramp up. Yeah. Well, you anyway. know, you shouted out Johnny. I want to shout out you for editing the podcast. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. No, yeah. yeah, no, thank you. You've edited like the past few, and it's been way better. And I so I appreciate it. So uh, shout out welcome. to you, Brian. Thanks, my pleasure. Thank you. Um. Also, just want to mention our sponsors real quick, A Guy and His Pie, Bomb Burritos, Pepperidge Farm, and our local, our favorite local bike shop, Mythic Bike Works in Peacedale. And we have a Cranksgiving ride coming up in about a week, week and a half, depending on when this comes out. It's on Saturday, November 19th at We Roast Coffee Co. in Lincoln. Pedals up are at 9 a.m. We have all the details on our Strava page and our Facebook. And it's a canned good drive. So you bring a canned good or any non-perishable, non-perishable food item and enter to win a prize from the raffle. We're going to have like gift cards from a guy in his pie and bomb burritos and some Ija merch and um, gift cards for We Roast Coffee where they're hosting it. So come on out. There's three different routes, but come on out and ride any sort of route that you want. Just be there for the raffle afterwards. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see a bunch of people there and thank the three of you for uh, coming out and doing this podcast. And um it's probably the coldest part of the day so far right now, so let's all bundle up and go for a ride. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Thanks. Thanks for having me. See Bye. ya. Decaf left, regular right. Decaf left, regular right. It's very challenging work. <laughs>